this computer. So everybody, welcome to our uh, ENSA class today. We're going to take a take a left turn, do something different today. I'm going to talk about how to create classes and some of the gotchas and how to import some uh, some items into your classes, in particular the shells that I sent out to everybody um, as part of the class earlier, uh, well, last week sometime during the during the meeting, but. What I want to do is show you how to create a class. I've already created a class, one of those classes, and I created a class. And one of the big things that will get you in trouble is you notice it looks like that I really haven't added any new classes that are coming up. That's because my status is in progress. But if I go to not started yet, here's a class that I created before our class started, which is a, a switching routing and wireless essentials class I'm teaching up in Virginia Beach at Damn Neck in July. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the course that's the brother to this course, and not start at damn neck, SRWE. And so I'm gonna go in and just click on create course. Now for me, what you're gonna see is something a little different because in the drop down box, I have 16,000 different colleges. Okay, that's a little extreme, but I have a lot. Um, and you may have multiple schools, especially if you've been associated with different schools, so a big gotcha when you're creating classes is make absolutely sure that you're on the school that you want to create the class in. So for instance, if I clicked Stanley Community College and created this class, it would not be an instructor trainer class. It would be a class just for regular students. So I had to select the instructor training center, which I do. And then you see all the list of the courses that I am accredited to teach, which pretty much everything in the academy right now. Um, uh, they do have a model driven program ability. Good. That was the last one I just finished up. Um, but you find the course you want, whatever happens to be. In this case, this is an introduction to networks class, CCNA version seven. Click continue. And then now you've got to give the class a name. Actually, you got to select the version first. So it's going to version seven. Then you got to give the class a net course ID and a name. Now, um, these are both required. I make them match. So this is going to be a uh, damn neck and by the way damn neck is a military base in va in virginia beach it's an extension off of oceana um itn uh, july 2020 now for me i just make the course id and the course name the same um that's totally optional it's up to you whatever you want to do there um somebody's got music playing some more mute, mute that okay um thank you um now start end dates this class begins on July 20th, but I'm going to actually have it start on the 19th, just so I've got it available. And it ends, this is a week-long class that I'm teaching to the military. Um, and even though the class technically ends on the 24th, I'm actually going to push that out uh, a little bit. I'm just going to go out October, August 7th. That way, if anybody needs to complete some items after the first week of class, they can. I give you one thing I strongly tell people is don't make the end date the last day of your class. Typically, um, I know that's counterintuitive, but what always happens is if you make it the absolute last day of class, let's say uh, your fall classes end on December 12th and you make that your end date, you're going to have some student that needs to turn something in on December 13th. Um, and it's a little bit of a pain to try to go back in and change the dates for the class. So, I would go ahead and make it a couple days, maybe a week or so after the actual end date uh, is what I make my end date. Um, you'll then see a description. I don't ever put one in. And then you'll see your instructors. Now, if you happen to have multiple instructors at your school, they're gonna co-teach and you're both accredited. You can also select an additional instructor to go in here. Uh, I'm not gonna do that right now, but that is um, what you can do. And at this point, the class is ready in terms of version, what it is, name, start and end date, click continue. And now you got a couple options here. One is save as draft, which means it will be on your course detail page. You can add students, you can do everything normally, but students can't see it. I don't normally save as draft because I always forget to publish it. So I just go ahead and publish now um, and publish it out there. Really the big difference is this, my students aren't enrolled yet anyway, so they're not gonna be able to see it. So now we're sitting at where we can do student enrollment. And I'll show you uh, how to do that in a few minutes. I want to do the importing of the shells first before we do that. So we've got a class now. It's unpublished, or excuse me, it's published. Um, it has the ITN class and no one is in it. So before we put anybody in it, we're now going to import 
the shell. And the important thing about this shell is right now, if I launch this course, I want to show you what's in it. So we go to modules and you will see that we've got, you know, course introduction, course content. You've got your module group exam. So the exams for the different modules, your skills exam, course feedback, practice final, final, and preparing for your future. You'll notice, however, there are no assignments. So in other words, all those upload items that you have in the classes that, that you've taken with us, none of those are in here. So when you go to the assignments page, you're gonna see just the base items that are in there, which is pretty much just the packet tracer assignments, the final exam, and the group module exam. So there's not really any of the assignments you're accustomed to seeing here. Those were all created by me and by um, Kirby Simerson and those shells. So what we've got to do now is we've got to import that information into this course. To do that, you first need to download the shell. So when we go to downloads, you'll see I've got these two shells downloaded. So the ITN shell, IMS CC, and the, the right, switching routing wireless essentials I used earlier. We're going to go over to settings and we're going to import course content. Now, once we do this, we have to select some type of content. In this case, it's an export package. That IMSCC is a Canvas export package. So we click on Canvas export package. We go pick our file, which is going to be this ITN shell that was in the downloads I sent you from Dropbox. All right. Now, always, always, always select specific content. Don't do all content because if you do all content, you'll actually re-import or import multiple um, different modules of the same name. So in other words, you would import two of the module exams. You'd import two of the getting started. So you want to do select specific content and then you can adjust the due dates and there's a way to shift the dates. I'm just going to remove dates because um, on this particular class, I have a different way I do dates for, for assignments, but you could shift them if you wanted to and say it begins on this day, ends on this day. I'm just gonna remove them for now and click import. At this point, it begins the process of importing this content, but it's gonna queue it until it's gonna say select. <clears throat> oh, my internet's gonna be unstable for a second here, hold on. Okay, so I hope my internet just came back, so. Um, once this comes up, select content. You're gonna click on it. And this is where you're gonna make decisions about what modules to import. For all of the V7, the CSA version seven classes, you need to import all the modules that have names and the module number on them. So in this case, I'm gonna import all of these modules, which are the 17 modules for ITN, okay? So that's the first set of items you import. And then you want to import the assignments. And in this case, you want to import the packet tracers and the labs, because those are the ones that were created by Kirby and me. The rest of these are already in the course because they were created when you created a base course. And that's it. You don't need to import anything else because if you do, you'll end up with doubles of those items. Okay. So again, the modules and the packet tracer in the labs. This is how we set it up in every class. There'll be those items there. We select the content and at this point it begins the running process of importing that information into the class. As soon as it finishes, what you will see is the addition of 17 new modules and a whole bunch of assignments. So if we go over here first to assignments, let's go look at the assignments. You can see now there's a packet tracer assignment area that was not there before with all of the packet tracer uploads that we've configured. So if you click on here, you'll see that this is an assignment that is a file upload. And it tells you retrieve the packet tracer from this page, upload a completed assignment, and upload a screenshot of the assessment items, exactly what you've seen in our ENSA class. So all of the packet tracer assignments for every packet tracer in the curriculum is in here. All of the labs are in here now. So here's the entire section of labs. Let me pull this down here. Oops, pull the lab up above. 
Let's see if I can't get it. Okay. All of the labs are in here now. So these are the same things, but these are the hands-on labs using either real gear in your classroom or net labs for us. So all of those are there. And you've still got the modular group exams. You've still got, you know, your skills exams and the other items that were there when you first created the course. Now you do end up a lot of times with this little extra assignments module here. Just delete it. You can just go in here and delete that module. The other thing you'll notice is this is where you can set your percentages to determine the grade book. So right now, if you go to the grades, of course, nobody's in this class, but if you go to the grades, you'll see um, that at the end, there's percentages for right now, the final exam is 30% of the grade, the skills exam is 30, modules are 40, and then nothing else has a percentage grade. So in this class, if you want to set percentages for assignments, you do that under the assignments tab. So you could say, okay, I want this to be, you know, 30% of the final. Um, I want labs to be 30% um, of the final. Okay, save that. And then I go down and now and look and say, okay, so module exams, I've already made this 30, 30, and it can't be 60, so let's make this 20. So we'll go, oops, edit this, we'll make this 20% of the final grade. And come on down and the skills exam, I typically make 10% of their final grade. And then I make the final final 10% of their final grade. And if my maths are correct, we should have 10, 20, 40, plus 60, that's 100%. So now if we go back to grades and we scroll all the way over, you will see that the, the grade that is figured for this class uses those percentages. So 30% for packet tracer, 30% for labs, 20 for the model groups, 10 and 10. And that's how the grade in the grade book right here is figured for the student. All right. But you'll also notice now that we've imported this under modules, we now have down here all of the modules with their packet tracer and their lab assignments. So the students know what they need to do for each module. Now I typically pull these other items down and make the modules, you know, the first thing after this. So in other words, all these things that are here now, so the course content, the module group, actually course content, I leave there. But the skills exam, course feedback, practice exams, and the final, I actually move this stuff up above that. Um, I put it right above, right below course content. I do that with all the different modules. Um, I'm not gonna move them a bunch right now because this, this class I'm gonna do a little different for, um, for, my, for my class. I do a, a day, I do them by day and, and, and assign it. Um, but that is the process of importing in a shell into a, uh, into a class. Are there questions about this? That's awesome. Yeah, it, it saves a lot of time because otherwise you'd have to remake every assignment. Um, folks, I also do have for you, if you go to YouTube and you go to my channel, um, which is the same channel that your, um, the playlists are on, but the ITC summer classes are here. But under ASC ITC tutorials, I do have a CSNA V7 shell imports. Make sure you do this one. Don't use the old one, importing shells into a new course. Uh, this is the version six, and you had to actually do a lot more work back then because you had to delete um, existing module items that aren't there anymore. So use the CSNA V7 shell imports, and this will take you through the process I just went through, but without some of the detail that I gave you, okay? So I'll actually put that into chat for everybody. Um, I can find my chat here. There it is. So let's see if I can't put that in there. Oh. Nope. Well, I joined a little late. Where are the files? I emailed those out to everybody. Those are um, the files are emailed to the class. Um, okay. I, they're they're on Dropbox. They're on my Dropbox. Um, but I sent you direct links to them. Um, but they are these files right here. And there's one per, 
for each one of the classes. Okay. Did you? If you didn't get that, let me know, and I'll send you send you a Dropbox link. The links again. The other item I want to show you now. Again, when we go back here to now, created this damn neck introduction to networks class and typically I'm in my in progress so let me let my internet stabilize typically I'm in my I'm teaching and the classes are in progress so if you create your classes and can't find them just make sure you click in the drop down and go not started um, and you'll be able to see it um, or you could do all statuses and you'll see both those that are started and those that are not I typically do in progress and those not in progress. But if you look in our ENSA class that you are in, the modules here again, all of the module items and all of the assignments, I just brought them in with a with the shell to make it a lot easier on us. Um, and again, there's our that's a I did that for y'all labs in Word format. But here's our here's our modules. So where these I these are the items that were were placed into uh, the class itself. Okay. Now I do want to show you a couple other little things about class management, and one is um, how to add students. So obviously these classes have been created, but there's not a single student in it. So I go to course details. You'll see there are no students, and we have a couple options here on how we add students. One thing we can do is we can do an individual student by either putting in an email if it's an existing student already in your academy or if you click add new student you could put in their first last name and email address now one thing to be very very careful with is make sure you ask the student if they've ever had especially in their in the introduction to networks class ask them have you ever had a cisco academy class before because if they'll say they had one in high school or they had uh, maybe IT Essentials with another instructor, you want to make sure you use whatever email address was associated with that previous account. That way you can ensure that those students maintain their academy transcript throughout their entire uh, Cisco Academy career. Um, that's really important because down the road they'll be able to get into the alumni, Cisco Academy alumni, and they'll be able to actually pull and show and instru um, other people who want to hire them what classes they have taken in the Cisco Academy, which has a lot of uh, pull out in the real world when you're trying to get a job. So that's one way you can add them individually like that. Not the easiest, but it is a way. You can also import with a CSV file. So you can download the template and here's the template file you can see here. We'll open it up in Excel. But basically you put first name, last name, email address, and the student ID, which allows you to put your campus student ID if you have a want to do that. It's not required, but you can. And then uh, let's say I had a class of 40 students, put in all their information and upload it. Upload the file and it will automatically place them in the class. Again, still make sure this email address, ask them, do you have an existing Netacad account? So that's option number two good for big classes, um, you know, really good for big classes. Another good option for big classes is, go back to add students here, is the managed seat tokens. So in other words, if you go in here and let's say I want 10 seat tokens, let's do 10 tokens. And this is how I did, uh, as some of you have been added before, you give out this seat token and then the student, when they, go to sign in so let's go to netacad.com i had to use a different browser so that you because i'm already logged in but you can go to login and you can do redeem seat token and when you do that it's going to ask you do you have a net academy login or are you new so if a student already has one they just click here and they had to put in the email address or screen name associated with their academy account and then you put in their, they put in their C token and it will enroll them in the course. If they don't have an academy login yet, so let's say it's their first class, introduction networks, never had one before, and go, I'm new to the academy, and they put in the information that they need with the C token, and it will enroll them and also create them account and netacad.com uh, 
at the same time. The important thing is here is make sure it's an email address they can access um, externally, especially like if you teach at high schools and the email addresses can't be accessed externally. Uh, the reason being that Netiquette has to be able to send the activation email uh, to that email address. And if the student can't get to it, they're not gonna be able to activate that account. So that is seek tokens, another excellent way of doing it. And then a great way to do it once they've already been in a class. So let's imagine uh, you're teaching, uh, you've taught ITN introduction to, to networks. Uh, you taught it in, uh, in, the, in the fall and in spring, you're gonna teach switching uh, routing wireless essentials. You can actually just go to your school that you're at, find the course that's currently running. So for instance, let's say I was gonna enroll all of you in a cyber ops class. I could click right here and I could just import the students that are already in the class. And I could click here if I wanted all of them or just some of them. So you can actually import from an existing course and then you will be able to see who is, who is able, uh, who you can pull in. So once you get them in that first course, it's pretty easy because then you just import them from the course uh, from then on out uh, and it makes it very simple. Once you do this, you will have students in your class and you will be able to um, start doing some other management items such as, all right, stop a second. Any questions on adding students? Nope, I'm good. And my internet connection keeps me in unstable, which is aggravating, but hopefully y'all can hear me okay. Loud and clear. Okay, good. All right, so one other item that we, I need to give you a big caveat on is a lot of you uh, teachers tend to be type A. So you're gonna create the class, you're going to uh, import the shell, and you're gonna immediately go, okay, I'm gonna turn on all the exams. Well, the problem is, you cannot turn on any exams until students are enrolled in the course. So you've got to have student accounts in the course. The other item that's a big problem is if you enroll, let's say you enroll 10 of your students today, you could go and turn on exams. So you could create activations, but they will only be active for those 10 students. That's one of the reasons why at the beginning of our class, especially in introduction to networks, I'm a big stickler about getting as many people into the class as I can before I turn on exams. I've always got people going, well, you turn on the chapter exam, turn on chapter exam. I'm like, we've got to wait till everybody gets enrolled and I've got everybody in the class. They've got all redeemed their seat tokens um, because when you create an activation, it's only being created for the students who are currently enrolled in the class at that moment. So if you ever get a situation where you say, I've already turned that exam on. I know you know somebody's trying to take it and it's saying it's inactive but I know, go and check to see if possibly it was, you activated it before their account was inside of the class. The other thing you can do too is an activation profile. So for instance, if you know that you want to give uh, the activation window, let's say you wanna do it for 90 days. Okay, so you could do 90 days as the max. In fact, I'm just gonna copy this profile because it shows, but it's 90 days max. The exam duration is typically only an hour, but you know I've set it to three hours. I want it in English. I want to randomize items, provide student feedback, provide student with the correct answer if they want it, and personalized feedback. And then for my exams, since these, and this is the one I use for most of my instructor classes, that they're administered in a less secure environment. Click Save Profile. At this point, when I do start to create activations, I can just do a, um, uh, activation based on the profile and it will have all those items already changed for me. That is awesome because I hate doing that on every single test. Every single, yep. So do that in the activation profile and you won't have to do it but once. And then you can do an advanced activation and every time you do advanced activation it will activate using your activation profile settings. So now, one other thing here, let me go back to our class so I can actually show y'all. Um, so in our class, so again, management things. So if I go to assessment center, uh, some things you can see, you can actually always see when you do manage activations, you can see what exams are active. 
You can also see um, who they're active for. So I can actually see what students this exam is active for. I can see the number of attempts each one of you have done. Okay, and if there are any incomplete attempts, see what form it is, if there are multiple forms, okay. So um, the other item you'll notice here, course feedback is on. So I've activated the course feedback, but if you want to activate the final exam, all right, you go to your assessment center and you go create activation and you go to secured assessments and you'll notice the final exam is not on anymore. So I did have someone take it already, but I'm gonna create, click here, create secured activation. This exam is only able to be activated for seven days at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate it uh, as we get closer to time for people to take the final. I'm gonna say it, for us, it's gonna be in an unsecured environment. I'm gonna allow you um, up to four hours to finish it. I'm gonna create the secured activation. Now, I go to manage activations, you will see that the final exam is active and it's active from today, the 14th to the 21st. Be aware you do have to take the course feedback before you can take the final exam. So that's, and that's a Cisco requirement. That's not me, that's just a Cisco requirement. All right, if I go in here though, and I go to, so there's another exam I wanted to, to activate. Come on, assessment center. I go create activations. I could pick any of the exams. You know, all these are already there, available activations. Uh, everything else is already activated, so I'm not gonna. But practice final, let me turn on practice final for y'all, just in case, because it's only allowed for seven days too, which I don't understand why the practice final is only able for seven days. It used to be, you could do it for up to 90 days, but whatever. The final thing I will tell you, when a class ends, uh, everybody's done, they finished all their exams, to save yourself and your uh, Academy Sports Center a lot of headache, when the class is over, go to bulk deactivation and deactivate all of the exams for that class. Just to make sure there are no incomplete activations that are left. Um, you'd be amazed the number of times I have someone in a class who can't they're in instructor class and they can't take an exam and come to find out back when they were a student, they didn't complete one exam and it was sitting there incomplete and that has stayed in the database the entire time. And, and now two or three years later, we're trying to figure out how to get that exam, you know, uh, deactivated. So to save everybody a lot of headaches when class is over, two or three days after class is over, go into bulk deactivation and just deactivate every single exam. And that'll save headaches for everybody. Okay. Um, any questions about other items with class management? I will tell you, you cannot change passwords for your students. Um, that is not something we can do anymore. Um, they have to go into the Netacad. Um, if you know they forget their password and they're not able to get into it they had to go to login and they have to oops, let me go back over here and netacad.com they had to go here and say forgot password and they had to go through the process here because it's now part if you'll notice it says identity it's all part of cisco's one identity so we're not we don't have the ability to see their passwords. We don't have the ability as instructors to change their passwords. So they, that's the only way that students can, can change their password if they forget their password. Okay. Um, think of other items that we run into all the time. Um, one thing I will tell you is this, uh, there's a new feature in place now that after 90 days, uh, you'll notice if you look at my, I'm teaching here, there's a bunch of stuff here and, and rightfully so for a lot of it because some of it is stuff that's um, classes that I have in my open community college uh, items. But as you look in here, one of the things you will notice is these courses, once the end date is met, so this is August 19th for what I've got this set for. I think our actual end date is the 15th of August. 
But once this class ends, after that date is over, 90 days later, this class is going to be archived. When the class is archived, I'm not, I will no longer be able to access the grade book and see the detailed grade book. All I'm going to see are the final grades that were given in each individual area. So be aware that I'm going to actually jump back out of here because I guess I don't want to show everybody's grades. But um, be aware that you're going to have that issue. 90 days after this class ends, it gets archived and you will not have the detailed grade book. If you're going to need that detailed grade book, you're going to need to export, export the grade book before those 90 days, before the class is archived. You can then save it wherever you need to save it and you'll have access to it um, down the road. Okay, but be aware that's a big change that's coming up. And one of the things I'll show you, if you haven't noticed it up here, you've always got emails that are being sent. So here's your recognition awards. You may have won one and didn't even know it. Uh, there was an issue with PTSA exams, older versions that they fixed. You see right here, this course archiving. This is what's being talked about here. How does it work? It gives you the course details, the roster, the final exam score, the cumulative grade and completion status. That's it. It's not going to have that um, detailed grade book. So make sure that you perform an export of that grade book. Any class that you've taught that ended before the 30th of April, on July 31st, those classes are going to be bulk archived. So make sure that if you had a class end before then and you want to save a detailed copy of the grade book, that you go ahead and go into it right now and export it. So go to your ended courses and export it. Any class ending uh, 1st of May later, they are going to be archived automatically three months after the end date. And once that happens, you can no longer launch the course. You're only gonna be able to look at the, the basics here um, that will be there. So. You also won't be able to uh, mark any student says completed after a course has been archived without going through some pretty rigorous processes. So just be aware of that. And, and there, is a, there is actually a, uh, an entire video on the archiving process and what it is. Um, but there are a lot of, if you haven't been keeping up with news and events here, uh, a lot of them are right in here and you can read them. So here's our August fourth through fifth IPD week. The new membership guides come out. Uh, drafting and sequencing for the DevNet Associate. Huh, look at that right there, DevNet Associate. Huh. Oh, wow. Um, so all kinds of cool things that are coming up, but you can you can go through here and just make sure you don't miss those because it's easy to miss it because it's up here uh, and we just don't look at it. So just make sure you're, you're taking a peek at it. All right. Any other questions about classroom management or classroom items? Creating a class, importing shells, any of those things. I will show you one more thing. If you do have a class that's recently ended, you can click there and you'll see it. So this is my the spring cyber ops class that ended on 22nd of June. We had to let that one go over a little bit so people could, could finish up. Um, not started, those are the ones I have there. Drafts would be those that have not been published yet. Okay, here's some that's I never published for whatever reason. And then of course you can also do your all statuses which shows everything. Typically I work from in the, just the in progress and shows me all my, my classes that are in progress. All right, uh, any questions before I stop the recording?